Polymers are long chains of atoms made up by repeating groups of atoms called monomers. These types of atoms in the polymer chain determine the properties of the polymer. A hard, brittle polymer is described as glassy with lots of amorphous crystalline mediums, and a soft, flexible polymer is described as rubbery with lots of amorphous regions. Heating up a glassy polymer with a sufficient amount of energy will allow the chains in the polymer to move relative to each other. The temperature at which this occurs is called the glass transition temperature. Polymers can be designed so that the glass transition temperature is suitable for the specific application of the plastic. If the glass transition temperature is high, then the polymer is described as glassy. The reverse can be said for a rubbery polymer. It can be lowered by the addition of side groups meaning that the polymer chains are less able to pack together, reducing the effectiveness of the weak van der Waals forces. However, introducing polar groups into the polymer chain can increase the intermolecular permanent dipole to permanent dipole bonds. This means that the chains have a stronger attraction between them, making the polymer stronger. There are also other ways to change the properties of polymers, but we will be focusing on how plasticizers can be used to do this and why they are so important in the manufacture of a polymer that is all around us. First, we will look at other theories which try to explain how plasticizers lower the glass transition temperature of polymers. The simplest theory is the lubricity theory. This theory suggests that the plasticizer is introduced in between chains of polymers, allowing the chains to slide more freely over each other. A slight step up from this theory is the gel theory. This suggests that the plasticizer that is introduced between the chains reduces the intermolecular bonding between the adjacent polymer chains by blocking the interactions between them. Finally, a combination of the gel and lubricity theories can be applied to the free volume theory. The free volume theory suggests that by introducing a plasticizer into the polymer, the chains have more space to move as free volume is increased, which allows the polymer to act as a rubbery polymer. Free volume can be increased by other methods, but we will focus on the plasticizers. The specific plasticizers that I will be talking about are phthalates. Phthalates are a type of plasticizer. Their structure is shown. DBP is a controversial plasticizer, the reasons for which will be explained later. Phthalates are synthesised by phthalic anhydride, which is a cheap and readily available chemical. Phthalic anhydride is first hydrolyzed to make phthalic acid. This undergoes an esterification reaction with an alcohol in the presence of an acid catalyst. The mechanism of which is shown. A double-headed arrow shows the movement of two electrons. So why are some plasticizers controversial? A property of plasticizers is that they are inert and do not react directly with the polymer chains. This means that the plasticizers are free to move within the plastic and can potentially move out of the plastic. They are only bound by the weak intermolecular forces between the polymer chains and the plasticizer itself. When plasticizers move out of the plastic, this is called leaching. When they do this, the plasticizers can be ingested by humans, which some people think lead to health problems. But where do we come into contact with phthalate plasticizers? 93% of plasticizers are phthalates. 
They are used in the production of PVC products. PVC is polyvinyl chloride, a polymer made from vinyl chloride, a halogen alkaline. PVC is very cheap to manufacture and is able to be applied to a range of products with very different properties with phthalate plasticizers. They are categorised into two groups, high molecular weight phthalates and low molecular weight phthalates. This helps group chemicals into two toxicological categories. These categories have been made according to REACH guidelines. High phthalates currently have no restrictions. Low phthalates have been classified as toxic and a potential carcinogen, a chemical that causes cancer. Under REACH guidelines, low phthalates are restricted. This is because low molecular weight phthalates are more volatile than the high molecular weight phthalates, therefore are more likely to leach out of the polymer. But where are we exposed to phthalates? We are exposed everywhere because PVC is everywhere. PVC is used in a range of products because it can take on a range of top final properties. But is there a danger? The answer is, we do not know. But evidence from studies has shown some adverse effects. But the reliability of these studies has been questioned. Phthalates levels are measured in urine and faeces. These studies have shown links to endocrine functions being disrupted, as well as leading to infertility in some males. There have also been studies to show that fetus development has been hindered upon different levels of exposure to phthalates. One study has shown that phthalates imitate the function of some hormones in the endocrine system, blocking their function and accelerating the breakdown of some hormones. There is inadequate data from most studies to validate the reliability of such claims. Despite this, companies and regulation councils have placed precautions to eliminate any risk in humans. It has been suggested that people use products without the PV symbol shown. But is this really feasible seeing as PVC is used in many everyday products? It may not be so easy to escape. The European Council for Plasticizers and Intermediates, ECPI, which represents eight European companies involved, in the production of plasticizers, is a founding member of Vinyl Plus, the new 10-year commitment of the European PVC industry. It aims to continue to build sustainable PVC products and minimise the risk to humans in the future. From this video, I hope you have enough information to be able to make up your own mind about the use of plasticizers and their everyday use in products.